to just see the person that he is now and the shift in and when he talks about how it was for him and how it is now it's just incredible like not a lot of people could do that uh, my name is Nigel Smith. I was working at, at Tube Makers for a bit over 12 months before the accident. It, it was just like a, a family, well, a big family um, company to work for. Um, yeah, it, it was a really good place to work. 7th of December 93, the accident happened. So you were one of the first people on scene? I was one of the first there, yes. E everything was going along fine uh, until we had a jam up on the conveyor. Nigel didn't know the, the, the whole workings of the machine. I stopped the machine, uh, climbed up on the conveyor and, and moved some of the product back over to the correct position. Flicked the tube over, as soon as the tube hit the procs, it automatically took off. Um, and I was actually standing on the machine uh, and had my leg between two plates. Um, when it took off, it just knocked me off and I fell down and, and picked up the next brace. But if he, if he hadn't, uh, Matt hadn't have stopped the machine, another three feet, Nigel would have been cut in half. It was pretty horrific. Um, I shattered both the bones right down near my ankle. Um, tore about 50% of my calf muscle off. Uh, and I had a, a big laceration went right around my thigh and right down to the bone. So it was about uh, 12 months before I actually lost my leg. Yeah, I know that a couple of my bosses are going to be there tomorrow that I've worked for. Um, and and uh, Kevy Baker will be there tomorrow. He was the first first aid person there on site that helped me. So it'll be an interesting conversation, I guess, to talk with Kevy. I've just made a cup of coffee. Uh, when Matt started blowing the horn, oh, what's going on? And I looked around, I could see Matt, and then I seen this other helmet. He should bloody be there. It still makes the same noise. Yeah, mate. Except for your screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could actually hear it before the whistle. Right. I couldn't work out where it had come from. Once Matt started blowing that whistle, yeah. going down around the corner, look down. I've worked here for 46 years in August. You've seen some changes? A lot of changes. <laughs> um, th this side's always been really good in um, storytelling. I um, mean, using storytelling to actually trigger something in people to, to really trigger why safety is important. And because we now think about potential consequence rather than actual consequence, we actually get to, to learn from what could have been the, the tragedy in finding a, a near miss or a, a, an incident that could have harmed someone. So we still treat it the same way. And I've come into a really good culture, a really good, strong business that was, that was thriving. Um, so to hear about how things used to be, how the culture used to be is quite surprising and really sometimes um, not believable. Well, there's no culture like there is now. Um, like we used to just sometimes you wouldn't even turn the power off. You'd just get in, fix the machine up, that was it. The whole safety culture in the workplace has changed dramatically. You know, back then, you know, workplace safety, it, it was sort of optional. Um, I think the pride now on this um, site is the pride of everyone being involved in safety and, and safety being everyone's um, business, not just management business. Um, as, the, as the acting operations manager at the moment, that's one of the biggest things I'm proud of, this site. We educate our people now even though it happened 20 or 30 or 40 years ago, we still remind our people that it did happen and why it happened and, and that it plays a really important part of how we are now and who we are now because that um, emotionally drives people to be safe at work and to look after themselves and their workmates because they don't want anything like that to ever happen to them. 
And I think it's very unique that you can have an individual who's had a very serious incident, who can come back and talk 22 years later to a group of people, and some of us were his workmates at that time. I was like your average 25 year old. You know, I, was, I was flat out everywhere and into everything. You know, I led a really active life. After my accident, it, it took me quite a while to get back into living any sort of normal lifestyle. You know, I went through a long period of, of, of feeling sorry for myself. But I realised that I had this group of people around me um, who had propped me up and supported me through you know, what I can only describe as the toughest times in my life. That the way I was living was affecting these people, um, I guess, was enough of an inspiration for me to, to get up and, and have a go. And, you know, really find out what I could do because I, I had no idea while I was sitting in the corner crying about it all. Up until the other the last week when I came back and actually sat down and spoke to Kevy about it, and that, you know, it, it really reinforced to me um, how we just don't understand. We, we don't know the full impact. And you know, there's so many people's lives that are affected when someone gets hurt. Yeah, I have been through it. I don't, do not want anyone to go through it. I would not like to see anyone go through it because it's not worth having your mate injured, maimed, or anything like that. It's just too horrific. And you don't get it out of your mind. Like this happened back in 93, and I can still remember everything as if it was yesterday. I think if I, if I had to say to Nigel, um, f first of all, from, from a business, we'd have to say that you know, we're, you know, we're very sorry that, that that incident happened to him. I'd, I'd like to make him feel comfortable, I think, around that out of that incident, we've never had another horrific incident on this site like we did that day. So one of the things I guess that Nigel can take away from this as well is um, knowing that he's potentially prevented the, the next couple of injuries from happening in that area. Years ago, before Nigel's accident, yeah, we, we talked about safety. Was anything sort of done about it? No. Today, yeah, safety's years ago was down here. Where it is now, it's way up here or above. It's, it just keeps going and it's getting better and better. Coming full circle, it's great to be coming back to the place where I had the accident and to, to try and help with safety there. But I, I, I think it is a little bit dangerous to, to assume that we have come full circle and, and come to a conclusion. You know, this is the start of the journey of working safely. You know, we, we can't um, rely on the fact that, that we've made it. You know, we, we do have to keep striving for, for a safe workplace. You know, I've got a 17-year-old um, son and a 15-year-old daughter. Um, some of the ways that I judge a workplace is whether I would let my son or daughter work in this workplace. And I guess I'm proud enough to say that on this side I would have no hesitation to let my son work in this place. Um, can I say that about every other industry? Um, I'm not sure if I can. Yeah. You look after each other. That's what we're here for. If you don't look after each other, it's a waste of time being here.